Are you or a loved one suffering from depression or anxiety? Has your doctor recommended you take Lexapro or the generic version Escitalopram? Are you concerned about the possible side effects? If so, then this is a video for you. Keep watching to learn a little more about what to watch out for and how this medication can be helped to you. Welcome to Family Med. I'm Dr. Richardson, and this is your home for practical and accurate information to help your family make healthy decisions. This is the channel that focuses on bringing better health to your home. On today's episode, we're going to be going over a common antidepressant named escitalopram, or more commonly referred to as Lexapro. Escitalopram is a generic version of Lexapro, which was released in 2002. Lexapro is a medication that is used most commonly to treat clinical depression and anxiety. It's in the class of medications that we call SSRIs, or Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitors. These are a group of medications that target the hormone serotonin and help decrease how rapidly it is broken down in the nerves, thus keeping your serotonin levels a little bit higher. It's one of the vital chemicals, or neurotransmitters, that help regulate a lot of the functions of the body, like mood, social behavior, appetite, digestion, sleep, memory, among other things. It's one of the chemicals that plays a big role in depression and anxiety. When you're suffering from depression and anxiety, in addition to things like eating healthy and exercise, counseling and therapy, and getting plenty of sleep, targeting these chemicals in the brain has been found to be very helpful in allowing people to resume a normal life when they're battling with these conditions. So let's talk about who tends to benefit from taking escitalopram. The first condition that we use it for is clinical depression. With depression, you tend to have symptoms like difficulty concentrating, remembering things, or making decisions. You may also suffer from fatigue, feelings of guilt, worthlessness, or helplessness. You may also feel hopeless, experience sleeping problems, mood swings, have a loss of interest in things that you once enjoyed appetite changes, generalized pain, persistent sad or empty feelings, or even suicidal thoughts or attempts. For those that are going through anxiety, you may have symptoms such as sudden and unexplained onset of rapid heart rate, sweating, trembling, shortness of breath, pain in your chest, fear of dying, numbness and tingling throughout your body, or just a generalized feeling of anxiousness all the time that you just can't explain. If you're going through these symptoms, you need to seek help. You don't have to live your whole life feeling this way. Go see your doctor so you can get an accurate diagnosis and figure out a good treatment plan for you. Remember, depression and anxiety are as real of a medical condition as diabetes or high blood pressure. And you shouldn't feel any different about treating these conditions than you would with any other medical condition. Okay, so you've talked to your doctor and you both have decided that for your symptoms, Lexapro is going to be part of your treatment plan. So what should you expect? Well. First of all, it comes in a pill of doses of 5, 10, and 20 milligrams. Most people be, end up being on 10 to 20 milligrams. That's the kind of medication, though, that you need to take daily if you're going to be on it. Most people will start to notice some difference within one to two weeks, but it typically doesn't reach its full effect for four to six weeks. So, you should be following up with your doctor within two to four weeks after starting on it to report on how things are working. If you're going to be taking it, you want to make sure that you're not missing a lot of doses. Doing so can really affect how well it's going to work and increase your risk of having side effects. Also, unless you're having some significant problems with the medication, especially after being on it for a few weeks, you don't want to stop this medication abruptly. After being on it for a while, your, your brain gets used to a certain level of the serotonin, and stopping it quickly will really throw you off and make you feel bad. Most doctors recommend that if the medication is working well for you, you should take it for at least six months before you think about stopping it. Stopping it sooner than that because you feel like your depression and anxiety is gone increases your risk of having your symptoms return. If you feel like it is something that is making a big difference in your life and you want to continue on it longer than the six months, then it's really safe to do so. I have patients that have decided that they need to stay on it for years and that really works for them. So what kind of side effects should you look out for? Well, as with any medication, you can find a big list of side effects that will be listed on the paperwork from your pharmacist. Sometimes these lists can be intimidating, but in the case of Lexapro, it is generally well tolerated. I, I rarely have patients on it that want to stop it due to significant side effects. However, any medication has the potential of having some side effects. Some common ones that are possible would be some headaches, nausea, tiredness, or difficulty sleeping, maybe some dry mouth, constipation, or abdominal pain. 
These type of symptoms tend to be short-lived to most people, and oftentimes, by modifying maybe when you take it, or, or by even taking some food with it, you can improve or even avoid a lot of them. Usually with time, they start to get better on their own. One area of concern that a lot of people have is the effect that the antidepressants can have on your intimate relations. This can be a known problem with most antidepressants, but I haven't seen it quite as much with escitalopram as with maybe some other antidepressants. Now there are some ways that we can work with that problem, so if it occurs to you, don't stop it. Talk to your doctor and see what they have to say. Now probably the most common reason that I have somebody stop this or any antidepressant medication is that they just didn't like the way they made them feel. It may help with their depression or anxiety, so they don't feel sad anymore, but they don't feel happy either. And that certainly isn't the goal of this kind of a treatment. Our, our goal is to help you lift you up out of the hole that you're in and help you see that life is doable again. If we turn you into a zombie and you're neither happy or sad, we aren't doing you any favors. We still want you to be happy when you're supposed to be happy, and when you're sad when you're really supposed to be sad. So if you're noticing things like this, then talk to your doctor about it. There are other options that are out there. Now, there are some rare side effects you need to pay more attention to, though. This is not an exhaustive list. However, it's important to know that, first of all, all antidepressant medications, including escitalopram, have the risk of making your symptoms worse at first. You may be feeling down right now, but if all of a sudden your depression and anxiety get worse, or you start having suicidal thoughts, you need to be in contact with your doctor and get help. I always recommend that when starting these kind of medications that you confide in somebody you trust and tell them that you're taking it. Let them know about these risks so that they can help you recognize what is happening and assist you in getting the help that you need. Other rare side effects can be certain heart arrhythmias, electrolyte disturbances, allergic reactions, and something called serotonin syndrome, where your body gets too much serotonin. This is very rare, but can present with symptoms like agitation, confusion, rapid heart rate and high blood pressure, dilated pupils, loss of muscle coordination, muscle rigidity, diarrhea, and heavy sweating. If you think this is happening to you, then get into your doctor or the emergency room right away. Now, the worst part about discussing the side effects of medications is scaring you away from taking them. It's important to keep the perspective that the vast majority of people taking escitalopram do really well with minimal to no side effects. So, if you're deciding not to take the medication like this due to fear of having a very rare side effect, you can potentially be robbing yourself from an important tool in treating this disease. Remember, it's important to keep the perspective that if you're having a problem with the medication, you don't need to stay on it. There are a lot of other options out there, so get in with your doctor and talk to them about your concerns. Depression and anxiety can be a very debilitating condition. It's as real as any other medical condition out there. When you have true clinical depression, taking something like Lexapro can be a life-altering step. I'm always amazed at what a significant difference this medication has had in the life of my patients. It's certainly not for everybody, and yes, there are some other non-medication options out there that may work for you. If, however, you and your doctor feel that this is the best option for your treatment plan, you now have a good foundation of knowledge of what to expect, what kind of side effects to watch for. Having that information be really powerful in your life. This is not an all-inclusive discussion on Lexapro, so remember, my purpose in sharing this information is to help give information that you can think about and discuss with your own doctor. It's not meant to give you direct medical advice in your own personal situation. So, take this information and discuss it with your own doctor. Overall, I hope you found this information to be helpful, especially in taking away some of the stigma that surrounds taking medication for mental health issues. Now, to keep learning about other aspects of your health, check out my other videos. To learn about some simple steps in eating healthier, click right here. To find out about some simple ways you can save some money on your health care, why don't you click here. Go ahead and subscribe, and let me know what you think in the comments below. So until next time, this is Family Med with Dr. Richardson, and remember to take care of your body, because it's the only one you have.